You let me know when I'm live again. We're good, we're good, we're back on. Hi guys. <laughs> so I'm back and I wanted to hop back in while this one, um, we're still on the same step that I lost you guys on. If you're wondering where Anita went, I mentioned we have some storms outside in Charlotte. So that stormy weather, of course, affected our internet and our live connection. So hopefully you're still able to tune in with me. Um, if the video separated, we'll make sure both pieces of the tutorial end up on the Facebook so you guys can follow along still. But to recap what we're doing for this video, since it's probably gonna be segmented out a little bit, we are stitching our live project today from our 2017 quarter one embroidery party. This was an awesome curriculum workshop that we did back in the day when Anita traveled to events and before we did our whole, um, our revised curriculum. So originally, this is the little booklet that we gave out at events with all the projects pictured on the back included. Now, we're doing an awesome promo on this for you guys today and for the rest of August. So every month, or this whole month, every week, um, on Tuesday, we've been doing 1.30 live stitch outs. Last week was Drea, this week is mine with the zippered bag, and next week will be Lauren with printed fabric. So if you guys are purchasing the curriculum and following along, you guys will get to stitch out the projects that we're doing with us in real time. So like I mentioned, I am today stitching out one of the zippered bags from this curriculum. This embroidery party is on special pricing. So it is originally $99 and we have priced it down to $34.95 for this whole month. And I know you guys are gonna to wanna to stitch all the awesome projects included in this. It is not just a zipper bag. We went over in our video before we cut out of some of all the awesome different projects and quilt rocks and 3D embroidery and all kinds of things that you guys get just for purchasing this one curriculum. Um, it will come as a digital download for you, so if you purchase it online, it'll come um, as a PDF to you guys and you'll get the same set of instructions that I have here. And to recap where we're at with the stitching, we have started our zipper bag. We have created the top and the bottom of the bag, and we're now running that decorative embroidery. So currently my machine says we are on step seven out of 10. So we're getting close to the end. And while I've been recapping with you guys, it's just stitching out this feather design. So we are stitching it in real time. I know we lost you for a second, but I swear we would played no Houdini tricks on you. And it just kept stitching the same step. <laughs> so. Um, again, if you tuned into this video and you missed while well, this is finishing our last flower, um, not only are we doing a special on the embroidery party, but we have a flash sale product as well. And I shared that earlier. I'll give you guys a little peek of that again. So we came out with this collection in 2014. So this was not in all access, but this is our blackboard bags collection. Very pretty and inspired by, of course, the traditional chalkboard look. So we got that white thread on black. We ran some of these on a nice felt material. And then we even did some on cotton. So depending the kind of style you're trying to get or the look, you can change out the material for that. And then we also had our team stitch out this really fun, vibrant variation for you guys. So you can see that just because it's blackboard, you don't have to do it blackboard. And I think this fun pop of teal is just the color we need on this dreary day here in Charlotte. So hopefully we won't lose you guys again, but if we do, just bear with us. All right, so I've caught up with that feather step and I'm gonna change out my embroidery threads. So now that it's done the feather and the flowers, my step eight tells me I'm doing those little details. So I am going to pick this nice bright purple. Bear with me, you guys, I got my nails done and I'm not used to having them. <laughs> Trying to take thread out and I'm like, not able to do it. I just wanted to look pretty. Here we go. And pull our old thread out. All right, and we're going to thread the needle and we'll start the embroidery. Again, I'm on step eight. So we're gonna run all those cute little decorative steps. So again, I wanted to make sure I go over this for anyone who either started a little bit late or maybe got a little bit confused. And I'll kind of talk about it as we go through the bag. But to start, we're gonna end up with three different pieces of our base fabric. So we have one larger cut and two smaller cuts. We then use our first placement stitch to lay our zipper. After our zipper is placed and tacked down, we then do the two pieces of folded fabric. So depending on how your hoop situated the design, it could be left or right. So just follow your design on screen. Um, but once we finished our two folds and it tacked them down, it did that secure stitch across the zipper and now we're running that decorative embroidery. So very cute. Again, I mentioned some of the other projects in this. Here's a shot of those beautiful radial quilt blocks, you guys. 
So we did do a radial block there. Wanted to show you some of those. So those are included in here as well. And again, if you've never done that kind of project, we kind of walk you through it with step-by-step -step pictures and the machine instructions. We did some of these beautiful trapunto blocks. So if you've never done a trapunto quilt block, it has a high lock batting underneath the base fabric and it creates a little bit of puff in the design. So we also go over some of those. Lots of different options. We even have heat and shrink, which is something we haven't come back to in a little while, but heat and shrink was a fun project that was included in some of our curriculums with that shrinky material that helps it shrivel in on itself. So we got lots of fun ones. I did have some pretty samples here of things that come from this quarter one 2017 curriculum. I say curriculum, but it's an embroidery party, so don't quote me on the actual terminology, but it says embroidery party right on the cover. So if you're looking for it, try searching embroidery party and it'll have this nice flowery pattern in the flower design. Lots of good ones. I hope you guys are still able to be tuned in here and following along with our bag. Again, I mentioned in the first half of our video today, we have these cute little lace charms as well. With the holidays coming up, these make great additions to tie onto presents or if you stitch their smallest size, maybe you could put them on kids' shoes or bags. All kinds of fun ways to use those. And I didn't show you guys this tea towel earlier. Check out that, that's beautiful. So this is our technique called cut work. And that also is included in this embroidery party. So if, again, if you guys are trying to learn some new techniques in your quilting or sewing arsenal, we got you covered with this embroidery party. Tons of different beginner friendly techniques. And this cut work was done with like a wash away stabilizer and then it has those nice little holes in it. Looks great in the kitchen. So those are some of our little samples. And then again, I have those quilt blocks. If you guys have questions again on any of this, make sure you shoot them our way in the comment section and we'll be sure to answer them. But you can just imagine how pretty a quilt would be with those stitched together. So we have them as individual bound blocks here, but this nice, pretty spring colorway, very fresh. I love this sparkly dragonfly they did. Very cute. And then again, we have this radial quilt block. So if you've never done radial, it's similar to folded fabric, is done all the way throughout the folds. And we actually teach you guys how to hide your start stop point. So very fun, different look to a quilt block than what you're used to. There's that trapunto again I mentioned earlier. So it has a slightly lofted look to the edge if you were to look at it laying flat, but very pretty. Some traditional quilting techniques that you can do all in the hoop on your embroidery machine. And if you're like me, you like to take shortcuts sometimes and then have the finished product look like it took you forever. <laughs> so that is our goal here. Love and labor with a lot of time saved. <laughs> so we're still running those decorative pieces on our bag. Do you do a giveaway? Yes, I do wanna do a giveaway. I'm being reminded that we have stuff to give away for you guys. I think we're gonna do, let's say, a $25 gift card for someone. So if you guys are still tuned in and listening, you guys can win a $25 gift card. We're gonna do a code word in the comment section. Let's do feather, because we have this cute little feathery design on our bag. So code word is feather. Go ahead and type it in the comment section below, and we are going to pick someone at random from the comments, and we'll let you know who that winner is shortly. Speaking of feather, there's another little, little lace feather. All the feathery designs. So hopefully that'll get you guys going and excited because I know that I love a good deal. So if you don't want that $25 gift card, you don't have to say anything, but I know you guys are gonna blow it up. Um, if you don't get chosen for the gift card, don't forget again that this is originally $99 and we are pricing it down to $34.95, which is the price of a project collection. Um, and you guys are getting slam packed full of projects. So, so many projects inside of this that you guys will be able to stitch out and try at home. And if you stay tuned each week, we're also stitching some of those projects out live. So you'll even have an educator to help walk you through the project. Do we find a winner? Yes, Yolanda Lehman. Yolanda Lehman, congratulations. You've been chosen for our $25 gift card. So Yolanda, just reach out to customer experience via email and let them know that you were chosen to win our gift card and we'll be in touch with it. So stay tuned, I have a couple more steps and I might give one more gift card away just to keep you guys hanging on the edge of your seat. 
And don't forget, not only is the embroidery party curriculum on special that we're doing right now as a project, but we do have those blackboard bags on flash sale. And that flash sale is 65% off. It was originally 50, and we decided to up that and make it even better. So 65% off sale, and that is running through Sunday, I believe, August 22nd, I have written down. So you guys are able to snag those at 65% off their original price. And they come with tons of different designs and different sayings on them. And like we mentioned earlier, you don't have to do them in black and white. You can get really fun and creative and just make a really cute sewing notions bag like this one. I'm laughing because it said this little berry step was the shortest step and it's longer than the feathers were. <laughs> but we're getting through it, guys. We have only a few more finishing steps and it's starting to look really cute. So hopefully if you're stitching this in real time with me, our quick little power spurt might have given you time to play catch up. And I think we have one more step of embroidery after this. So I'm going to get my next color ready. So it's stitching the lighter purple accents that you see throughout the design here. And then the last or next step that we're doing will be these light colored feathers. So there are like those almost white, but they're light pink little feathers we'll be doing there. And we gotta wait for that step to be done. So we are running through it. Let's see, so some other things to mention to you guys. Our curriculum for our embroidery, what is 102 is, which one's 102, Lauren, help me. Embroidery made easy. I was trying to say quilting and I was like, that's not it. 102, embroidery made easy. We have so many curriculums, I had to have Lauren help me remember. But 102 is currently on sale as well. So if you guys are looking to do some stitch outs with educators and see how our curriculums used to be taught in person, you get the same education in that download format um, with the books themselves and all the designs that are included. So if you guys like tuning into all of our videos and checking out how we teach our workshops, you definitely will want to check out the 102 projects um, and that curriculum is on sale as well. How long is that sale running for? Rest of the month, all right. So 102 is on sale till the end of August, so be sure to check that out. Are we finished with our berries? No, I lied, oh, it's almost it done. <laughs> awesome, Madison behind the scenes says she's gonna put that in the comment section for you guys as well. So if you're looking for all those sale items or promos we're doing, you should be able to link through them um, either in the comment section or in the description of the video. So hopefully we did this bag at a nice pace for you guys. No questions so far on how it's been made, so that tells me it shouldn't be too difficult. And we love to make things beginner friendly. So again, all of our instructions and our tutorials come with two types of instructions for you guys. So we have the picture steps, where it'll show you step by step how to follow along with one of the designs. And then we also have the numbered machine steps, which are usually in the back of the book or the tutorial. And they include the numbered steps that match what your machine is running. So a great way for two different types of learners, or if you're like me, like to use both sets of information to get all that you can out of it. Our next step is gonna be, again, those light colored feathers. So I'm taking my very light pink and threading that through. And I hope you guys have been excited about all these interactive things in the book as well. We've been hearing some good feedback on that, so I'm sure you guys are loving it. So get excited about these digital downloads because that means it'll come to you immediately. No more waiting for shipping. I know that everyone hates waiting for things to come that they want right now. So now when you buy things on Anita, you can get it immediately as a download. It's always a bonus. So if you followed along again, I'm gonna recap what we're stitching for today's project. We are stitching the bag number, let's see, where's my notes at? I wanna say it's 117 zipper bag one. I lost my page. This one right here has a little feathers on it. I'm pretty sure it's 117 zipper bag one or so. Um, and I said it earlier too, if you need to double check, but that is what we're making. And it is from our embroidery party, quarter one, 2017. With these cute little flowers and designs on it. If you're looking for it, it will be linked for you guys. And you can also check it out online. And that's originally 99 priced down to 34.95. So we are stitching out, I am on step number nine. So we have one final step after this to finish off our bag. So we're getting to the end, you guys. I can see the finished zipper bag come into life. We got one little feather left for it to stitch out. And then I get to show you guys how the magic is made. 
So again, we promise that these are entirely in the hoop, unless stated otherwise, depending on the collection. Um, almost all of our zipper bags finish off directly in your embroidery hoop. No additional sewing required. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how we do that. So again, earlier we talked about our different cuts of fabric. This was my largest piece. And if you can tell, it's enough to cover the whole bag. So we have a nice big cut here. And we're going to use that to finish it off as soon as our little feather finishes stitching. And don't forget, you guys can tune back into this video at any point. So if you were stitching along and either the power outage split it up or you needed to stop and get a coffee break, <laughs> you can come back to the second half of the video and tune in and pause it as you go, whatever you need for you to stitch along and have your project come out beautiful. Like this one looks so cute. So we're gonna let our needle finish up this little cut dance. There we go. And now I get to show you guys what that looks like. So this is where we're at currently for it in the hoop. This is the edge that goes into my machine just so you're oriented on which direction it is. Now, one of the most important steps in doing zipper bags in the hoop is what I'm about to tell you. If you have made it this far and you have followed along, congratulations. <laughs> the easiest part is to remember your zipper. So from earlier, we taped this down and I'm just going to remove that piece of tape because we no longer need it anymore. So now we're going to find the top of our zipper and we're going to open that zipper at least halfway. My rule of thumb is like two thirds of the way open. The goal is to make sure your embroidery foot will not hit the zipper when it's passing over this bottom edge of the bag. So just be sure that you leave yourself maybe a half inch or so of space from the edge of the design. But the larger the opening, the easier finishing this off is going to be, and you'll see why shortly. But we opened up our zipper, so do not forget, if you're following along, open the zipper. And then the last machine step will be to tack your back fabric. Now, even though it's called a back fabric, we're going to place it over the top of the design. And if your fabric is directional, so if your fabric is printed on one side and not the other, you're going to lay it pretty side facing downward. Mine is a linen, and it is the same on both sides. So I'm just going to cover up my design. And you want to make sure you cover all the outer tacking stitches that we saw earlier. So there it is laid in the hoop. You can tape it if needed, but again, I'm pretty comfortable with my hands. So I'm just going to make sure I guide it. And we're going to pop it back into the machine and run that final step. And this is going to be that tacking stitch that helps secure the bag all the way around. So it should do a two ply for you guys. And again, I use my hands to just help guide the fabric so it doesn't get any wrinkles or weird puckers. And we know we cleared our zipper from where I laid it earlier. And you can kind of see that zipper right there. And I used that light pink color that I ran on the last embroidery step. But if you guys are worried about seeing stitches in the sides when you turn it, you can match your fabric here as well. But it's just a sample, showing you guys what it looks like. All right, so it finishes up that last step. I'm going to let the machine do its little song. There it is, it's on silent. You don't get to hear the song. It finished embroidering. All right, so we're now going to take it from the machine. And you guys can see what that looks like finished off in the hoop. And you're probably wondering, all right, Melissa, how'd you get from that to this? <laughs> so we're going to show you. So when your project is finished, if you followed along with me so far, we are now able to remove the hoop, pop it right out, and take those and get rid of them. And now we have our stabilizer and our bag. Now, I, Lauren, do you have any other scissors I could use real quick? Yeah, any big pair of scissors would be great. I'm getting her to hand me some better ones because all I got are my curved scissors here. But I'm going to show you guys how to trim it and how to successfully turn it. So if you're working at home, this is a great time to break out the rotary cutter and a mat. But I'm going to take scissors to it. And the rule of thumb is about a quarter inch seam allowance. If you like to be on the safe side, I would say a half inch. Um, and I'm not being very particular. I'm just kind of eyeballing it since it's for visual practice. So we're going to cut around that tacking stitch on all four sides. And you should be able to cut straight through that nylon coil zipper. And hopefully all of you have a trusty pair of scissors you can use for that if you're worried about dulling them. 
grab another pair, <laughs> use a different pair of scissors. But it can cut right through. You just got to give it a little bit of a squeeze. And round in my last edge. There we go. Can take all the trash and get rid of that. And then another quick tip for you guys, you'll notice one side has the stabilizer, the other side's our fabric. We are going to take our scissors or your rotary cutter and do about a 45 degree snip on each of the four corners. Again, I mentioned doing a quarter inch seam allowance. This looks a little closer to a half, um, but the shorter, the cleaner it'll look when it's finished. So you guys can do a smaller seam allowance. And we trim our four corners. And you get the idea, it doesn't have to be perfect. But that is what it looks like trimmed. And now the important part is to clear the path for our actual zippers so we can turn it. So we did use a no-show mesh stabilizer here and that would mean there's no opening. So we're gonna take a handy dandy seam ripper and you guys will see there's the bobbin stitch line down the middle of that zipper. And we are just going to take it and do a little slice down the center. You can also, I'm gonna use my curved tip scissors, you can trim away some of that stabilizer from the zipper path. I find that this helps your zipper open and close much better. And that was one of my little tips I'd give you guys at events. So if you're missing in-person events, I know we are too. But this was one of my golden tips for you guys is to take some scissors and just remove that extra stabilizer. That way when you open and close your zipper, it doesn't get stuck on that extra stabilizer and jam it. So now we have our zipper cleared and you can see how I meant the larger the opening, the better because now we're gonna flip and turn it. So it did finish truly in the hoop. All you have to do is reverse it. And you can use a turning tool to poke out your corners a little bit better if you need to. I'm just gonna use my hand. Poke through each of the corners there. And before you know it, you got a finished zipper bag. So I hope you guys found that as easy to stitch out as it was for me, even with our mishap. I know we had a little quick intermission there because our power went out here in Charlotte. So if you're wondering why this was uploaded in multiple pieces, or if the video all is in one post, either way, you should find all the information about it in the description of the link. Um, again, we did the zipper bag from our embroidery party from the quarter one 2017 embroidery party that you see here. This one is on sale for you guys, so if you're watching the end of the video and you're like, I really wanna make that zipper bag, or any of the other projects we're doing this month, um, be sure to check this out before the sale is over in the end of August. And I hope you guys enjoyed the stitch out and be sure to check out Lauren's stitch out next Tuesday at 1.30. Thanks for joining you guys.